we've got here is four crates from, uh, picked these up from local big box, got them held together with clamps, and then got the uh, hardware, and you'll, you know, I'll, I'll kind of walk you through that. All I'm going to do is just drill through here, on the, put two on the far, you know, on the outside edge, and then two on the inside edge. So, and then I'll have two, you know, on each of these outside edges. This right here measures 30 by 30 and then measures uh, nine and a half deep. So I'll actually get about nine inches of shelf space on each one. And uh, I'm hoping to be able to, you know, start with putting the more, the heavier stuff down on the bottom, stack everything up on it. And uh, I'm gonna do just one of these for right now. But as you can see, you know, this could be expandable, you know, any direction, you know, maybe if you wanted to run two of these flat across the bottom somewhere you could to you know get out of the way of maybe dresses in a hanger or something like that. Um, the reason I'm going with this instead of something permanent inside is or something like bolted to the wall of the, the closet is I'm looking to make these so that I can take them with me and they can be modular so I can change them to make them uh, any size I want. So let's see how this turns out. So I've got uh, the speed square measuring tape uh, pencil stuff sitting over there already and I've got the four clamps holding it together other than that I will be using these 1024 by 516 T-nuts and then I've got the just uh, machine screws here again 10 by 24 got the I think it's called like the little drywall magnet or whatever to be able to put those in I'll be driving those in with the impact um, I'm gonna be careful with that because I really don't want to rip the uh, the the uh, prongs don't want to rip those prongs out or rip the wood off it is very soft wood but I've got the uh, brushless DeWalt impact and the brushless DeWalt hammer so let's see how this turns out did a uh, horrible job of narrating this for you guys while I was doing it. What I'm doing now is I'm actually using one of the clamps to insert the uh, T-nut with the prongs to get that pressed into the wood. Um, it did work fairly well, but as you can see there, it slips a bit, so I actually ended up having to go to a hammer later on. Having a little bit of a predicament earlier, and you kind of saw how I finished it. But getting these, uh, getting these T-nuts with prongs in, was uh, a little cumbersome at first. Trying to get it in on something like this that I didn't want to hit with a hammer, but found that if you just press it in with your thumb and your finger, and if it doesn't want to go in the wood nicely, all you do is simply put 
I take the rubber off of one of these, off the bottom, and then put this down and then just tighten it up and it just sinks it right in. And it's hard to see with the light, but all right, now let's see if I can't get this in and get it to threads to take. There we go. All right. That was interesting how it fell out as soon as I went to push that in, which means, you know, it's only going to be good for keeping it to twist, not actually providing any, uh, any, uh, resistance for it to fall out. That's okay as long as I know it now. Not a big deal. I'm still not really liking this being up top. I think I may end up rotating this one, continuing to build this one this way, but then rotating it so that this would actually be the top part. Hmm. We'll see how that goes. Got all 16 T-nuts and machine screws in, but I've also had our first casualty. So, as you can see, everything comes off well, but we've had our first casualty right here, and you can see right there where it obviously wasn't stapled in very well, and it just blew that edge out. So now you can see where this, this lash or slat is screwed solid to this edge, but this right here is going to move a bit. I think uh, I'm going to have to figure out a way to make that work. But to be honest though, I'm not upset with it. You know, we'll... Uh, Try to get some of that stuff out of there tonight, try to get this put up, and then uh, get you guys a couple of pictures and hopefully get this uh, video posted by Sunday night. As you guys can see, everything looks much more organized. I've still got a couple of things that I need to put back in there. The bags, and I'm actually going to stack the bags in front. Because those are the bags that I'm going to be getting to most often. I think I'm also uh, taking a look at putting a some type of a cloth just to drape over it to keep you know little hands from touching some of the stuff down there. I mean it would be you know very or not very, but it could be dangerous, especially with the lead content of some of that stuff down there. I've got you know, 9 mil over here, 357 over here, and then behind that in the red bag that was in there originally, I've got uh, my rifle and shotgun, and then here I've got 22 LR. So I think uh, in order to keep little hands from touching that, I will probably, like I said, I'll probably just get some kind of a cloth to lay over it, probably maybe even just a bed sheet and then weight it down. So I'd like to thank you guys for sticking around for this final look at it. And I will get this up. And please, if you have something else that does, you know, a similar job that was a DIY, please post it down in the comments. Leave a link to your own video. Thanks.